Welcome back to the O Show. Everything crypto and NFTs every day. I'm Wendy O, and we are going to be talking about Stacks, STX, because it is doing well. And quite another bunch of topics that we have to talk about. Some plays that I'm in, what's going on with the crypto markets, etc. Okay, we're going to talk about it. We're going to get into it. Thank you so much to the members of the channel, to Mike, to Alexandra, to Servando, to Steven. And no, I'm not a bear. I like just like to practice risk management and play things safe. Because if you don't do that, that's how you get wrecked. Even though we are in a bull market, you are still supposed to protect your capital. That's how that works, okay? That's how that works. Now, with that being said, let's go ahead and get straight into it. What's going on? What's going on? Let's first take a look at the entire crypto. And of course, that's not working. Let's take a look at the entire crypto market cap. We are in the green. And I wonder what Bitcoin is sitting at. It's probably doing well, considering. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at Bitcoin. Because if she's doing well, everything is pumping. And we'll also take a look at stacks, too. So as far as Bitcoin goes, as far as Bitcoin goes, um, we made a nice move up yesterday. We opened at 61.7 and we closed in 67.8. Pretty nice, pretty, pretty nice candle. And we're currently just consolidating between about 66 and $69,000. Taking a look at this other chart over here, this cute little chart over here, this other Bitcoin chart. Well, I wanna see, was it this one? Is it this one? All my lines and everything are gone. That's not fun. I had stuff drawn yesterday. I don't know what, oh, this is, this is Ethereum. I'm sorry. I'm just very tired still today. Okay. So this is going to be our other Bitcoin chart that we talked about. Take a look at the weekly to kind of see where we are as far as percentage pump. Okay. And we're still up quite a bit, even though we got that drop down to about $60,000 earlier this week. Now, taking a look at this chart over here. Yes, yes, yes. I know we are still technically consolidating in the range. And we did get that breakout, but we did fail and we rejected it. It's $67,000 here. Not the best, but hey, I will take it. I will take it. And as far as drops go, we almost got that 20% drop. So as far as Bitcoin goes, the fact that we kissed approximately $60,000, um, $61,000, that could have been it. That could have been it before the halving. So, hey, I'm with it. I like it. I think it's absolutely fantastic. If you would like to support me and the channel, you can go ahead and use the ref links over at Femex over or CoinCatch. Remember, not your keys, not your coins, and you need to read the terms of service because if you do not read the terms of service, I don't know what to tell you. Shout out to Rags to Riches, to Mo, to John, et cetera. If you guys want special shout outs, go ahead and become a member. And I will give you guys special shout outs. That's what we're doing now on this channel because we are here. We are grifting ethically as possible. Now, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. All right. Let's go ahead and take a look at the opening story with Stacks. So this is from the Stacks Foundation. Um, the Stacks Nakamoto upgrade was approved. The community resound resoundingly voted yes for the Nakamoto upgrade. A huge win for voters with stake Stacks. Every vote we cast in favor of the upgrade for non-stakers, 99.98. 98% voted in favor of the upgrade. Let's go ahead and talk a little bit about what Stacks is. If you don't know what Stacks is, they are a Bitcoin layer two, and they were one of the first ones to essentially come on the scene. I remember working with them way back when. Um, pretty, pretty cool stuff that they're building. But it's basically a Bitcoin layer two that enables smart contracts and apps with Bitcoin as secure as a secure base layer. Remember that when we talk about um, layer twos, they are not as secure as the initial layer one. And I've got a lot of problems with layer twos because even though I appreciate they're making the networks like scalable and all of that stuff, they're still not as secure. And it's still just a big pain to use layer twos, like to use Matic Polygon for Ethereum, even though it's been around for quite some time. I wish, I wish, I wish it wouldn't, there wouldn't be all these steps. I don't like bridging. I don't like dealing with all that stuff. But hey, we will take it now. And I think in the future, we're going to see a lot more of this become actually scalable and usable. So I don't know. I'm with it. But let's go ahead and get in a little bit more detail about this. And again, we've been talking about and screaming about Bitcoin ordinals and BRC20 tokens and Layer 2 solutions for Bitcoin for quite some time. Now, 
Snacks is up 30% over the past few hours and it hit all time high of $3.65 and it's up 125% since the start of the year. Snacks is going to be one of the larger cap coins. And again, you're not going to see insane pumps when it comes to these things. Okay. And as far as the upgrade go, that's going to increase block times and network security with transactions on Stacks becoming irreversible as Bitcoin's testnet goes live March 25th. And the main net is expected to end on May 25th as well. So we got a little bit of time, but I think that's absolutely amazing. And again, that makes me happy. We need faster transactions for Bitcoin. If you play around with BRC20 tokens, it, it it's a bit of a different process than it is with Ethereum or Solana. Solana's network just stops working. Ethereum, you can continue to use if you increase gas. And yes, we're going to be talking about all the Ethereum FUD in a bit, in a bit. And then today at 3.30 p.m. PST, we're going to drop some alpha about some Avalanche meme coins and talk about some stats over there, okay? But I do want to take a look at um, STX, at Stacks, and see what's going on price-wise. We're going to use the Binance chart because I felt like it. And taking a look at the weekly so we can really kind of zoom out and see we broke all time high. I'm sure this is something that Gamer was probably in. Also to shout out to Francisco for the 499 super chat. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Um do, 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 do. Mixing, can we change the title again? I don't think this title is a good one because um hold on a second. We'll move it here. Three times. Mm. I got it. We'll do that and see. Okay. All right. Now I want to go back and you've been taking profit on stacks. Good for you, Raider. I'm proud of you. Oh, your AI pumping 25 times from pre-sale. Let's go. Woo. I hope we're in profit. I want to see all that profit. I got some stuff I got to spend some money on. Like uh, my mental health, probably that would be good. But anyways, taking a look at stacks, um, stacks broke all time high and it's running upward and we're currently trading about $3.37. It does look a little bit tired on the weekly, but on the daily chart, we are seeing a bit of a pullback, which makes sense. Stacks had had some really nice price action since um, Wednesday, the 7th of February. Um, and we've been kind of consolidating alongside the EMA 50. And this is why I like to use EMAs because they're good. They're fun. They're fantastic. So where is stacks going to go as far as um, price wise goes? Well, let's go ahead and take a look over here. All right. So again, we draw our fibs and then we draw our fibs again over here. Let's see. Let's see. So if Stacks continues to run, I would look for 382, 396, 407, 419, 435, and $4.56. And some people are thinking, Wendy, you're not bullish enough. Well, this is just price discovery, man. We want to be cautious. And again, we do need to get corrections in this particular market. Now, I want to touch on what's going on with Brian Armstrong and Coinbase and the Ethereum ETF, okay? There's a lot of different things to cover. So let's go ahead and head over to our notes over here. Okay, so Coinbase CEO says they're a custodian for 90% of the U.S. spot Bitcoin ETFs. Armstrong dis discussed this, the, discussed the future of Coinbase, and they are the custodian for 90% of spot Bitcoin ETF assets. He said in the e he said that ETFs being approved is incredibly positive for the crypto industry. I disagree with you, Mr. Armstrong. He also said Coinbase can become people's primary financial account. He doesn't think Coinbase will become a crypto bank. Well, this is the issue with that, okay? Uh, there's lots of problems here. So first off, we have a big company, a big crypto company that is essentially monopolizing the entire industry when it comes to Bitcoin spot ETFs. The reason why we like decentralization is because we want to allow other people, to, we, we want to have many different entities doing things in the industry and not, not, not creating any type of monopoly. And that's what we're starting to see um, what happened. And as far as the crypto contagion goes, it's absolutely tragic and it's super upsetting because it was nice to have a lot of different exchanges as options to use. Like we had so many different options and there could have potentially been some of those options or come into play to also custo custody Bitcoin. However, many of them proved to be bad actors, which is very unfortunate and it sucks. And I hope that they, um, I hope that they get fined, they get clawed back and they have to, you know, they do whatever it is that needs to be done. Because unfortunately, there's been a lot of damage done in the entire crypto industry. Now, as far as um, the monopoly goes with Coinbase, 
My issue is, is I wish the SEC would give some sort of guidelines to coin or excuse me, to the entire industry so that we could have more players. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, so that we can have more people coming into the market that can essentially maybe custody Bitcoin for these ETFs or become exchanges, but also not only come into the market, we need guidelines so they can come into the market so they know what they need to do. And so they can also comply and keep retail safe. And that's why we want regulation, but we don't want regulation that's going to stifle the industry like what we've been seeing before. So that's kind of my gripe with it. Um, it definitely is. So is what it is over there. All right. Good morning to Queen. Good morning to Queen. All right. Let's go ahead and take a look at the next story because that was important for me to discuss. Okay. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Da -da -da -da. Hold on a second, guys. I need to check something. Check, check, check. Uh, okay. Hold on. All right, let's go ahead and get into the next story. This one is from Mr. Paul from Coinbase. And again, I really appreciate his legal take. So let's see what he's talking about over here because all that drama with Ethereum. So again, with the Ethereum misinformation as we wait for a decision on ETTPs. Okay, let's talk about some basic facts about Ethereum. Millions of Americans hold Ethereum, blah, 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 blah. It's been vi vile to crypto since 2015. Great, fantastic. Unfortunately, there were bad actors when it came to Ethereum, but at the same time, there's bad actors everywhere because we don't have any laws of regulation. So the basic recap here is the Ethereum Foundation is, in, uh, is uh, under investigation by an undisclosed state authority. Details remain undisclosed. An attorney said Swiss regulation Later may have served a document request to the foundation and may be working with the SEC. According to Fortune, the SEC is starting a legal campaign to classify Ethereum as a security. Other companies have also received subpoenas related to the investigation. According to a person recently received a subpoena request, the SEC's probe of the foundation began after the shift to the proof of stake. And this is Paul's response to everything that's going on, all the drama yesterday. So basically millions of Americans own ETH, um, showing its widespread adoption. And that's primarily because Coinbase was one of the products that actually had ETH listed there um, to where you could buy it. And Coinbase was kind of the one-stop shop for everyone. I've got a Coinbase ref link below for people that are interested in using it. And they do have a Web3 wallet, so you can remove your crypto from the exchange and you don't have to leave it there. You should never leave crypto on exchanges. And if you leave crypto on exchanges, that's your business. Don't do it again. And you should have learned from the crypto contagion. I think we all have at this point. Okay. Um, okay. Sorry. I'm writing something for my second media piece. Also, um, Ethereum, and he's right here, Ethereum has been vital to the entire crypto industry since the inception. It really has, because without Ethereum, we might not have NFTs the way we have them. We might not have all these additional tokens that do awesome things. So I think that I agree with him here. SEC officials and federal courts have consistently classified ETH as a commodity, not a security. And the CFTC has confirmed Ethereum's commodity status and ETH futures contracts have been trading on regulated exchanges since 2021. Well, we don't know what's regulated and what isn't regulated at this point when it comes to crypto. And then you should not meet the criteria of an investment contract under the Howey test. SEC should not deny ETH exchange traded projects, applications based on the own commodity status. And again, that's the problem that we're seeing because the SEC and Gary Gensler is really trying to put Ethereum as a security, which is interesting because when he was asked under oath if Ethereum was a, the second largest cryptocurrency by market cap was classified as a security, he says he didn't know. He couldn't answer that. So again, we have a lot of misinformation. We really need Congress to come into play. We really need Congress to come into play. So I don't know what they're doing. They probably got other things going on because America is going to hell in a handbasket. And that's the last thing that they care about is crypto. All, however, they do want to see BDC so they can all equally oppress us. Please smash a like and share this. I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. It would make me happy. Um, anytime you guys support the channel, it makes me happy and I'm excited. I'm excited, excited, excited. And now let's go ahead and get into the next story. The next story over here. Uh, Gamer said happy one year anniversary to Magic Eden and supporting Bitcoin Ordinals. See, we've been talking about it, man. We've been talking about Ordinals since their inception. Even though, well, so the guitar is my daughter. She wanted it. She wanted you guys to see all of it. She wanted you guys to see all of it. All right, now let's talk about this tweet from Ellie. If this is true, then it explains why the SEC has been so mum with ETH spot ETF issuers. The SEC staff may be waiting for any lingering investigations to wrap before Gary Gensler gives them direction. Let's read this. Securities 
An exchange commission is waging an elect energetic legal campaign to classify Ethereum, the second most popular crypto, as a security according to U.S. companies that have received subpoenas related to an investigation. The news delivers a further blow to the crypto industry's hopes that the agency will approve applications by BlackRock and others for an Ethereum ETF following the SEC's approval series of Bitcoin um, Bitcoin ETFs. So what does this mean? Basically, we have BlackRock that came into play and they want to, they want, they applied for an Ethereum ETF. The SEC has not been giving them comments, critiques, suggestions, et cetera, like we have seen them do with the Bitcoin spot ETFs. However, this is BlackRock and BlackRock doesn't play and the election season is almost over. It is almost here. We're finally going to hopefully going to get a new president. Unfortunately, they are all bad actors. They are all egotistical maniacs. However, I just want somebody who is pro crypto to become president because I care about my own bad because the access to the more money I have, that better I can serve my community and take care of my child. Now, with that being said, um, with that being said, it's going to be interesting to see how this impacts BlackRock because, again, BlackRock also wants to focus on RWAs. They want to make, they want to tokenize all their stock. So how are they going to do this without Ethereum? Or will they use another chain? And if they do, maybe they're going to use base chain, but base chain is essentially, um, but base chain is essentially on, um, um, the layer two for Ethereum. And also to, um, apparently Ethereum went, um, and apparently Ethereum, um, or excuse me, base had some problems yesterday. These layer twos just aren't working the way they need to work, which is totally fine. But anyways, that's what's going on over there. Let's get into the next story. This one is from Mr. Adam. All right, let's go ahead and just kind of cover this briefly. He he provides very interesting takes. But um, basically here, it's confirmed that Gary is on a fishing expedition to try to say Ethereum is in a, in a security because of POS. And again, if Gary Gensler classifies Ethereum as a security because of proof of stake, guess what's going to happen to your other coins? I don't care if it's Cardano. I don't care what layer one it is. If it is, if you can stake it, if you can earn passive income, then it's going to be classified as a security. You can call me wrong now. I don't care, but that's my belief. And that's what I'm, I'm standing on business here. So basically, um, he's saying, all I can say is bring it on, go on Gary, file the claim. Let's have the courts decide while you're recovering from your ripple case. I encourage you to read part of part three of is Ethereum is security.com outlining why POS is in a security. It doesn't matter. The validators are important but it doesn't matter because essentially you're earning by supporting the network. So who knows what's going to happen, but, but that, that's my opinion. And I think that, I think the SEC is lazy and that's how they're trying to take down crypto. But what do I know? Now let's talk about Coinbase. So Coinbase is going to launch futures for trading Dogecoin, Litecoin, and Bitcoin Cash on April 1st. I don't know why Bitcoin Cash, but good for them. I'm happy for them. I don't even know who uses that anymore. Um, but basically, they are going to, Coinbase Derivatives are going to launch futures for Doge, Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash, and they will be cash settle future contracts. And they're leveraging the self-certification rote under a specific CFTC regulation to list the contracts. This procedure allows exchanges to introduce new offerings without awaiting CFTC direct approval. They can only do this if they affirm the product's adherence to the Commodity Exchange Act and CFTC rules. See, now we're starting to see companies not even talk to the SEC. They're going to the CFTC because the, you're not going to get an answer with the, with the SEC. And again, that is stifling innovation. Will anything happen to Gary? No. Will he get fined? No. Will the other people working at the SEC get in trouble, maybe lose their jobs or be held accountable for their predatory behavior? Absolutely not. Unfortunately, that's just the way things work. Um, the courts and the law, they are, it, it's really it's really created to protect people with money, and I'm just kind of sick of it at this point. But hey, what can we say? Now let's take a look. This is, uh, buh, 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 buh. this is, oh, hold on a second. Let me just make sure I'm on the right page. All right. So this is good for Dogecoin, and hopefully this will keep, um, this will keep um, Dogecoin afloat because we don't have Elon shilling it. He probably learned his lesson, sadly. And now let's go ahead and talk about what happened to Base. So breaking, Coinbase is due to network congestion on Base Network transactions in on its wallet and website may experience intermittent failures, which is a little bit crazy. I don't know. Let's go ahead and fact check this. And this was, apparently, this is what Coinbase said. Um, this is according to this outlet, DGen News. And also to daily volume on base, sees 51% surge to $356 million on Tuesday, which was yesterday. TVL also hit new all-time high, $745.3 million. It recorded daily transactions of $1.65 million, which was around 130,000 new users on the network on Wednesday. And huge growth in activity since the launch of Ethereum's Demcon upgrade. However, it stopped working. 
And that's my problem with layer twos is they're not always trustworthy as the initial layer one. Now, the daily volume on base. Oh, we talked about this one already. Sorry. RWA tokens, meme coins, post gains, and crypto rebound. Let's talk about this one. Let's see what's going on over here. So the total real world assets, which again, real world assets are just basically another term for NFTs. They The market cap is up now over $5.5 billion and increased over 31% in the past 24 hours. The largest gainers in the RWA sector... PolyX, which is the native, native token of Polymesh, and it pumped 86.5%. CFG, Centrifuge, pumped 46.5%. Ondo, which is a BlackRock product, 33%, I believe. And the, the pump for the RWA sector comes as BlackRock launched the BlackRock USD Institutional Digital Liquidity Fund with Securitize and Coinbase, which we talked about and covered yesterday. And the fund assets weren't specific, but it will likely incentivize, involves tokenizing real world assets using the blockchain. And this is what I'm very interested about to see very very interested about and this is from coinbase this came out um, yesterday and they just stated that they were excited to announce that coinbase has been chosen as key infrastructure partner for blackrock and security ties tokenized investment fund <coughs> excuse me excuse me anyways this BlackRock enters new asset tokenization race with new fund on the Ethereum network. We talked about this yesterday, but we're going to talk about it a little bit more today because this is an updated story, okay? So the tokenization fund is on Ethereum, and it represents by build token, B-U-I-I. DL and is backed by cash, U.S. Treasury bills, and repurchase agreements. Securitize acts as transfer agent tokenization platform, while BNY Mellon serves as the custodian of the fund's assets. Other participants include Anchorage Digital Bank, NA, Bitco, Coinbase, and Fireblocks. Yay! The reason why this is important is because BlackRock and traditional finance is coming into the market. There is nothing we can do. However, we are here. We are rocking. We are doing the best we can. The best we can. Wendy is standing on business and I will be st standing on business as well um, after this show as I want to rest. Well, I won't be resting. Also to you guys, we are excited to announce that we are invested in Lingo and we're going to do a quick update here for them. Um, I've watched this project. I actually sat down with the team quite some time ago um, and they've kind of revamped everything that they're doing. And I think it's going to be really cool. There's going to be a lot of really great things happening. So again, um, we are invested, we are partnered with them, and we got some early alpha, okay? Some early, early alpha. So basically, um, Lingo is going to be a rewards platform that uses real-world assets, which is going to be easy to use and is going to onboard a lot of Web2 users to Web3, and I think that they will be able to do this. I'm, um, again, sat down, talked to the team, and they, that's exactly where their heart is. You get to stake Lingo and earn points. Reward points are redeemable for real-world things like shopping and travel. Unique business model, Lingo Holding Company owns real estate, generating value for the rewards system. And also too, you're eligible for a free Lingo Club NFT. All you have to do is complete some easy tasks and you get a night and, and get entered into the raffle, follow their socials, join the community, ask questions, and they're having a big launch soon. So take a look at it if you want. If not, that's fine too. And also we are excited to announce that we are also invested in ISA. ISA. Um, and we're invested with them here and they've partnered with Animoca brands, which is absolutely amazing. So basically, um, they have Animoca is an investor and strategic partner over at SC. And, um, if you guys don't know who Animoca is, they are a big, big player, massive, massive player. And basically, um, with the assistance of Animoca and co-founder, um, Sui, we, I believe that's how I say it. I hope so. We aim to revolutionize the Web3 industry, making NFT tokens, RWAs accessible for fun for everyone. Follow BlackRock and follow the money. And that's exactly what is happening here. Here is the SC platform. I hope I'm saying it right. Um, if this is what it looks like. It's actually pretty cool that they've got a live chat online, which is like kind of a troll box. And those are fun. If you remember being on BitMEX and some of the other exchanges, um, they used to have those and they're absolutely unhinged. But they've got like D-Gods up here, Doodles, um, Bored Ape. I actually kind of want to buy a D-Gods just for fun. I would I totally miss the floor at Pudgy Penguins. I'm upset about that, but hey, it happens, it happens, it happens. Um, but this is the platform over here. And again, I think it's going to be really cool. They're they're essentially gamifying their marketplace, which is awesome. And I'm glad to see more comp more competitors come into the come into the game. Basically, you get to engage in earn campaigns, win tokens and other prizes. And yeah, I think it's awesome. So I'm excited to be an investor here alongside um, Animoca, but on a much lower scale. Now let's talk about this story over here. This is from DGen News. Breaking top Ripple collection NFT 
or excuse me, Top Ripple or XRPL collection, um, X Punks is going to migrate to Solana. I think they gave me one. So this is pretty interesting to see. I think this is a smart move for them because there's not really a whole lot going on on XRPL. And again, I do not think Ripple and XRP is going to be really big, maybe for RWAs for like real world assets, but not for the JPEGs and stuff. It's not, it's more of a banker's coin, but that's okay. Again, you guys, please make sure to share this and smash the like. Now let's get into this. This is from um, French Hill. Whether it's debt box or Dropbox, Gary Gensler and the SEC is blatantly um, overstepping their statutory authority and your tax dollars are paying for their failures in court. Let's go ahead and listen to this because it's just so much fun. It is just so much fun. Okay, let's go ahead and put this back over here. Kind of see what's happening and go and listen to it. You know, not only has the SEC lost in the court of public opinion, even on a bipartisan base here on Capitol Hill, but the agency is now getting trampled by the federal courts as well, especially as it relates to digital assets. In July 2023, a New York judge determined that Ripple Labs did not violate federal securities law by selling its XRP token on public exchanges. In fact, in that case, uh, they were referred to as being arbitrary and capricious. Last August, the court rejected the SEC's reasoning for blocking Grayscale's Bitcoin trust from converting to an exchange-traded fund. And just in the last few days, a Utah judge imposed sanctions on the SEC for, quote, bad faith conduct and open, quote, gross abuse of power, close quote, that the commission had demonstrated in a case against Dropbox. And this is important because we haven't talked about this in a long time in this committee. And as a result of that gross abuse of power, the commission is required to pay the legal fees, which means that our constituent tax dollars are now being used to pay for the SEC's overreach and failure. So whether it's refusing to comply with the Administrative Procedures Act or not, or providing clear rules. See, that's a problem. I can't even listen to it. Is again, the SEC is asking for like two, two point, I don't even know how much they're asking for. It's just ridiculous. And like people are acting like we're not in a recession in America. Like people are having trouble like getting, like affording things. So again, the SEC takes our taxpayer dollars. They do whatever they want to do with it. And then we're the ones that get screwed. We're the ones that have to pay for it. And that's why I tell you that laws and regulations are not made for poor people. They are not made for the people. They are made for the elites. And I'm just kind of sick of it. You should be pissed. I would be pissed. Gamer's got something to say. He says, in 24 hours from now, Wendy, you're going to get a free airdrop bag of Z-Bit ordinals for holding your runestone. It's only 16 million market cap, which means it has a lot of room to grow on Gecko. And again, you guys, and shout out to Tom Crown. Shout out to Tom Crown. Um, I told you guys about, um, about runestone from Gamer. Um, and I went, I bought one, then somebody swept the floor and the floor is a lot higher. I don't know what the floor is right now. I kind of want to check and see, cause I'm tired of talking about the sec. I just want to make money and just go, just go, just go. All right. Where is rune stone? Let's say I'm on magic Eden. Uh, da, 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 da. here we go. Oh, the floor dropped. Ooh, the floor. The floor dropped. I was able to get in, I think, at point um, at what was it? What did I get in? And I got in at um, point zero four five. So I might buy another one. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Gamer, I have a question though. Do I have to put them in different wallets to get multiple airdrops or will it give me the airdrop per runestone I have? Because I know, I think with the board apes, I got. It depends. I don't know. So different different products are um, different projects do things differently. Anyways, I think that um, I'm, I appreciate what um, what Mr. French Hill said, but at the same time, I don't trust them to do anything. It's just a bunch of lip sort of service. I don't really believe these people are doing their jobs. I don't. I don't. All right. Now this is from Miss Haley. She said. Um, under the current administration, senior enforcement staff have what is known as delegated authority to start a formal investigation or subpoena a company without the approval of the commissions. This is not what the case under Trump administration, where an investigation had to be initiated either through a commission vote or directly by the director of enforcement. So basically, the SEC just goes and they uh, they just take advantage of people. They do. They really, really, really do. And they're overstepping their bounds. 
and the fact that they've lost, like they, they just keep losing in the court of public opinion is hilarious. But again, we can keep losing all we or excuse me, the SEC can keep losing all they want. But when are people going to actually do something about it? And according to Haley's post over here, so Judge Shelby found the SEC engaged in bad faith conduct against Debtbox. The judge had the judge has placed sanctions on the SEC for abuse of judicial process, ordered them to pay the legal fees of Debtbox, and denied its motion to dismiss the charges without prejudice, meaning it will not be able to refile the same charges at a later date. Amazing. Questions regarding whether Box case reflects isolated attorney misconduct or systematic issues within the SEC's enforcement. SEC enforcement activity has risen under Gensler and Gruel with a 3% increase in cases in 2022 and a request for more funding in 2025. And we shouldn't give them a raise until they can actually do their job. Concerns over potential pressure on enforcement staff to escalate cases leading to a potential increase in enforcement actions. And under the current administration, enforcement staff have delegated authority to initiate investigations without Congress oversight, unlike in the Trump era. And that's probably interesting to to talk about or to point out. And again, you don't have to like Trump, but if you cannot clearly see a lot of the um, inequalities and the overstepping of bounds that's happening during his during Biden's presidency, you really should take a step back and think about things. You really should especially if you're in crypto. And I'm not saying Trump is better. I'm simply saying we didn't have this type of bad behavior happen really under Trump. We did to an extent. We did to an extent, but not like this, not like what the SEC is doing. They're harassing citizens at this point. Allowing unchecked investigations could lead to costly legal battles and reputational damages for companies, necessitating robust oversight mechanisms. And Judge Shelby's ruling suggests organizational responsibility within the SEC, highlighting the need for accountability and transparency in enforcement actions. Um, and it's unclear whether commissioners approved the debt box case. Now let's go ahead and talk about this. Executive order on ensuring responsible development of digital assets. Absolutely fantastic. I just... I cannot deal with it anymore. We're going to read the notes here because this is a long document. So key points from the statement from the White House regarding CBDC in the U.S. So importance of sovereign money. Sovereign money is deemed crucial for well-functioning financial system, macroeconomic stabilization policies, and economic growth. Urgency in research and development. The administration prioritizes research and development efforts to explore the potential design and deployment options of a United States CBDC. Assessment of benefits and risks. These efforts should include assessments of potential benefits and risks for various stakeholders, including consumers, investors, businesses, and broader economy. Consideration of multiple factors. Factors to be considered include financial stability, systematic rest, payment systems, national security, human rights, financial inclusion, and equity. National interest. Launching a CBDC will be considered if deemed to be in national interest, with necessary actions identified and evaluated accordingly. Basically, we're getting a CBDC. It's going to get pushed through. They're not being transparent with you, and they're hiding a lot of unscrupulous behavior in a lot of verbiage. This is an exciting story. Human Rights Foundation just donated $500,000 to fund Bitcoin development and projects. Absolutely amazing. Because Bitcoin allows everybody to have access to their money and money is a human right. So um, Human Rights Foundation unveiled its latest round of grants under the Bitcoin Development Fund and allocated 500000 across 14 projects. The initiatives include global education, lightning network, advancement, decentralized communication, facilitating access to financial tools for nonprofits and human rights organizations. Grants focus on Latin America, Asia, Africa, and aim to bolster efforts in regions facing sociopolitical challenges. Sadly enough, this is sad because it's not really geared towards America, but again, we are essentially living in a time where our rights and liberty are being taken away from us and we're not going to be able to have any other action for recourse. Next, let's get into this. The Federal Reserve keep interest rates, rate cut outlook steady for this year. So let's see what's going on over here. So they kept rates steady at 5.25% to 5.5% yesterday as expected. And they projected three rate cuts for 2024, which lifted market concerns or lived market concerns, it would be adopt more hawkish stance. 
Bitcoin was six, 64,000 before the Fed meeting from its oversight low of 60,700 and then pumped to 64,000 right after the announcement. So as far as rates go, remember interest rates are transitory. Inflation is transitory. Cost of goods and services are not. So it doesn't really matter. All it's going to do is just allow the people to borrow money cheaper um, for us, unfortunately. I don't know if people, I don't, I don't like with lower interest rates, I don't even know if people could still afford housing. I don't know. And then this is important to note. Okay. NBC news, Apple sued by Biden administrator over alleged iPhone monopoly power. And the funny thing about this is I'm not even going to read the story, but again, Biden administration wants to go and sue Apple, but at the same time, they want to ban TikTok and in banning TikTok, not only are they going to take away your voice, they're going to take away your liberty, but the sale is probably going to be forced to a public servant or to Meta. They don't care about monopolization. They care when it impacts their bottom line. So Apple probably did something to piss one of the public servants off, in my personal opinion. That's just what I think, though. Anyways, you guys, I'm going to get going. I'm going to get going. Um, it's been a rough week, so I'm going to go. I'll see you guys later. I'm going to be dropping a good video at 3.30 p.m. PST about Avalanche meme coins, so check that out. And also how I think Avalanche might directly be able to compete with Solana as two, as, as they're both layer ones. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.